it started out pretty normal. Um, we had, he was older than me in school, so I really didn't know him. And we had run into each other um, at the township and um, started talking and went out a few times and um, I knew, you know, some people that he was associated with who were good people. And um, so we, we started dating and it was probably, probably close to six months before it started getting really weird. Um, and I tried to back out gracefully and um, I've always heard this saying, it's easier to stay than it is to leave. And that's very much the case. Um, I would get threats to kill my dad um, and hurt my family and, and things like that. So it, it kind of gets you in a position where, you know, I'm not living with, with them. I can't watch them all the time. And, and you're afraid to tell your family because A, you're going to be judged. And then I, don't, I didn't want him going and looking for him and, and any trouble getting started. And so it, 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 when it comes on, it comes on fast and hard. And then it's really hard to get out of. One night I was out with girlfriends having dinner and he knew one of them and sent her a text with my dad's street sign. Um, so of course I jump up and run to my dad's house and without telling him what was going on um, but wanting to know he was okay. It was a matter of three years um, and I had tried numerous times to, to back out and, and would send me subtle threats, but I knew what they meant. And um, it wasn't necessarily, I'm gonna kill your dad, you know, or, or things like that. It was, it was subtle and I knew what, what it meant. And it just, you cooperate and, and you do what you can to survive. And, and I think it was all a challenge to him and, and um, to break me down, and, um, and he did, because I'm not, I'm not scared of very much, but I'm, I'm scared of him, still. I moved and I would take the long way home or you know, switch routes every single day, because um, he had ways of getting other vehicles or having someone follow me. And, um, and so it was, it was I, I did that for, a long time and sometimes I still find myself doing it and it's been almost six years and um, sometimes I'll just get uneasy for no reason and and then I start you know watching everything and and on high alert but um, but I just stayed with them and then I reached out to sister care I have 26 police reports one of those is actually where he choked his ex-wife after I had left. Um, and like I said, he, he remarried immediately. And, um, and it wasn't long, to, I mean, he, he beat her bad. And um, he had choked her one night when they were out and someone else called the police. And he went to jail and um, managed to get out. And all the charges are gone now. And I don't know how any of that happens. So my goal is to take that and make a difference and make domestic violence laws tougher. Sister Care gave me everything I needed because I sure didn't get it anywhere, anywhere else when I went for help. I had family support and friend support, but legal support, I didn't, I didn't have very much of that. And Sister Care, Dr. Ross, was there the whole time and it was wonderful. Dr. Ross had met with me and she even came in on a Sunday and um, she did a danger assessment and I believe the score is eight whenever um, the victim starts dying, when they start 
and killing them and I scored a 30. So they empowered me and, and reminded me, you know, that that I can do this and that I, I can stand back up because you, you do feel it's debilitating. You know, the fear, the shame, everything is debilitating. And they reminded me that I needed to stand back up and and um, and that I had support and any anything that I needed, attorney, everything, they were all there. And um, I know I don't know. I would hate to think of where I would be without them. So peaceful. <laughs> I mean, really, for the most part, everything is just so peaceful because um, it there's constant eggshells with the abuser. You're, you're constantly walking around and trying to figure out what you can say and what you can't say because it, it changes from day to day. And um, just depending on their mood and if they want to fight. And, um, and they can take the simplest of things. And so it's just so peaceful and wonderful. And like I said, I still get nervous now and then. But, um, and I can't explain why, but um, for the most part, I, I wouldn't, I would not go back for anything. I wouldn't change anything. I, I would, anyone, anyone that's in it, it, and once you get out, you have to deprogram yourself when you leave. Um, because you feel so defensive, because you've been defending yourself for however long you were in the relationship. And, um, and so you have to deprogram all of that and, and um, realize that you don't have to do that anymore. And that's a sense of freedom. I call July 19th, 2015 my Freedom Day um, because that's when I went completely no contact with anyone, everything remotely associated. I can't, I can't even imagine um, because my, my getaway, my runaway was work or even going to the grocery store or w whatever I could do for a few minutes. I mean, you, you knew you had to get everything done quickly. Um, or there would be a fight when you got back. You, you had to go to work and come straight home and and um, and things like that. But I can't I can't even imagine having to be there all the time. I mean, even sometimes at work, I would just sit at my desk and work and cry. But it was a release, and um, and I can't imagine that desperately need to reach out and call sister care, call and get help and get out, especially with, with if you have children there, and, because that's the worst case scenario. Never stop speaking out and never stop standing up because they hear you, they hear you and it does make a difference.